is good you lot today i'm going to be showing with you my youtube studio space this is where i edit all my videos this is where all my content ideas come from this is where i film a lot of the intros the outros and some entire videos within this incredible space i really enjoy watching videos like this where i see other content creators with the space how they work with it how they set it up how they organize themselves all the gear they shoot with all of that great stuff because it also helps me as well. I don't know if it helps other people as well. It allows me to see how other content creators work, what strategies they have in place for themselves. And from that, I've been able to adopt those same strategies, but also develop them to work better for myself as a content creator. And hopefully maybe this video might help you out as well. Some of you might remember the last time I did a studio setup and it was in my bedroom when I was living with my parents. Well, I moved in this space in December 2021 uh, as I got a full-time job as a videographer, which means I am working five days a week. So I only really have two days a week to film and edit content. I'm not able to dedicate as much time to YouTube as I'd like to, but hopefully in the future it'll change. Maybe in the future I can make more regular content. But anyway, that's blah, blah, blah. So what was I gonna say anyway? Oh yeah, over the years, I have had a lot of studio setups. Well, I, I won't cast the old ones as studio setups. They've been in bedrooms, they've been in uni accommodations, and it's never really been space that I've enjoyed working with. But with this space, I've really been able to optimize it and make full use of it. Because look at this apartment, right? It's a bit of a vibe. So we're gonna do a bit of a lap. We're gonna start here with the desk set up, and then we're gonna end at the camera cage over there. So this is my desk setup. This is where I spend a lot of my time, my ass planted in this chair. It's a very generic chair. It is just like, I bought it from like Facebook Marketplace for 25 pounds. It does need a desperate upgrade in the future, but it hasn't fallen to pieces yet. So it's still all good. But I don't always have to have my ass planted in this chair because I have the desk, uh, which is a flexi spot standing desk. Now I must say a massive thank you to them guys for sending me out this desk. It's a massive upgrade to what I was using previously. There's a lot of space in it. I decided to go for this like really nice dark grain color. Absolutely perfect, really blends well with this setup that I've got in this apartment. It's a super sturdy desk. As you can tell, it is carrying a super heavy desktop right here and doesn't have a problem. So yeah, highly recommend flexi spot if you are looking for a new desk. I'll leave their link in the description below. It's the first link right there. Massive thanks to FlexiSpot for sorting me out with this desk. Now let's have a look at what is on the desk itself. Let's start with the peripherals. The keyboard is actually a very recent upgrade. I moved away from using a mechanical keyboard to this Logitech MX Keys. And I tell you what, it is a great upgrade. I didn't think I'd enjoy going from a mechanical to this type of keyboard again. But I tell you what, it was a great decision. And then with the mouse, I've also got a Logitech 2S Master Mouse. And I tell you what, these in conjunction with one another is a great combo and it's great for editing and also keeps it nice and clean. I've tried to go with an all wireless setup. For the mouse pad, I have this great fabric mouse, super generic, but actually fits the aesthetic quite nicely. For the headphone stand, I usually have this under the desk, but I decided to go for this one uh, because I had so much extra desk room that it felt a little bit empty there. I might actually add a vintage lamp or something like that in the future on the desk, but the headphone stand I'm using is really cool because it also has 10 watt wireless charging. Now the headphones that I'm rocking for this setup are these Audio Technicas, I can't remember what name they are, but they're like 40 pounds. And um, they're budget headphones, but the sound quality coming from them is top notch. I highly recommend them. And I've had them for four years. So they're super durable. And if headphones can last me for four years, that's unheard of. That's amazing. I would like to go for uh, wireless headphones in the future, but I just can't justify spending 200, 300 pound on wireless headphones when I have a perfectly functioning set of headphones right there. So they'll be uh, rocking on this setup for a little bit longer. On the other side of the desk, I have this USB charging station where I can charge all my batteries and things like that. Super convenient to have that to hand. And uh, yeah, nothing really much needs to be said about that. Now, I've had a few people ask me what monitor I use, and I use the BenQ PD2500Q. What any of that means, I don't know, but what I do know is it's a 25-inch monitor with a 2K resolution, 100% color accuracy for RGB and sRGB, so this is great for like editing S-log footage, editing all my photography. I know my colors are gonna be super on point, which is exactly what you want. So now on to the PC specs. You guys had a lot of questions about this, what CPU, GPU we're gonna be going through all that. Bit of a backstory, I built this PC myself 
four years ago. Now, even though the specs in this PC are like four years old at this point, it still holds up. It's able to handle most things I throw at it really well. It probably beats a lot of laptops that come out even today. You know, I built it for the longevity. I built it for the future. So now onto the specs that I've got written down here because there are a lot in this machine. We've got an Intel i7-8700K, an Asus GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card, 16 gig of Trident Z RGB uh, DDR4 RAM at 3466 megahertz. We've got a power supply of 650 watts from Corsair. The motherboard is a Asus Strix 370E. We have a Corsair CPU cooler, deep cool fans. I've added extra fans for extra cooling for this machine. A four terabyte hard drive, one 500 gigabyte SSD and one terabyte SSD. And of course, it's RGB. I actually built this machine originally for gaming slash editing but now I don't do any gaming at all. It's all about editing and also I don't have time to do any gaming. All right, desk setup done, on with the rest of the tour. Welcome to camera bag corner, creatively named so because there are camera bags in the corner. We have two 450 AW2s. One of them is work, one of them's mine. These are great sturdy camera bags. You could fit a lot of gear in these things. And then I have this KNF concept one right here. Uh, this one is the one I usually use if I want to keep nice and lightweight, if I'm doing POVs or anything like that, one camera, one lens, the GoPro, and a few spare batteries in here. So onto this unit here where we have some decor, sat navs, we have storage tins, some clapperboards, old cameras, a Photoshop box that's just there for aesthetics, a remote for one of the lights I use. And then in here, we have just miscellaneous items, some camera gear stuff, some sellotape, uh, spare lens caps. And then we have cables, high vis. This one has a light diffuser in it. Well, it's a I say it's a light diffuser. It's a shower curtain from Argos, but you can actually do some really cool stuff with lighting and one of them things. Then we have these Sigma bags, which are good for storage. This one just has a lot of lens hoods in. This has a lot of cables in. These are for the lights that I'm currently using. Um, other cables such as uh, the drone cables and just also gaffer tape as well. This might seem like a complete mess, which it is, but it's also an organized mess. Over here, we have some diffusers. We have gray cars for white balance. We have five in one reflectors, camera sliders. And then in this drawer, we have a lot of the stuff that I often use like um, microfiber cloths, uh, type C cables, power banks. And then we have notebooks, ignore the teeth whitening kit, uh, double A batteries, and then just other bits and bobs. And then the rest of these drawers are empty until we get to the laptop one here, which has my Acer laptop, which is okay for editing, for like photography and stuff, but video, not so much. Overall, it's a decent machine. And then we have like a Windows tablet under there as well. So now on to the first of two lights that I always set up in this apartment. We have the Sakani X60. RGB. I have made a full review of this light. It's absolutely fantastic. Goes any color you could possibly imagine. Has a lot of strobe effects and everything as well. And then the uh, softbox I have for it is this isn't the normal one that's set up. This is a lantern softbox, which is really good for situations like this where I need to light up a larger area because it has like a 270 degrees not field of view but it, it lights everything from like a 270 degrees kind of angle so i could be here and it will light me up and i could be all the way over here and it will light me up and even though it is a bit of a nightmare to set up in certain situations a light diffuser like this is great now these light stands are really good because you don't actually need sandbags on because they're so heavy duty that they ain't going to go anywhere but if you are going to be shooting with clients Use sandbags because the last thing you want is a light falling over, breaking, potentially injuring or killing a client because that's going to be super awkward if it kills someone. And then we have this bar stool which is actually used to put like products on and film b-roll of them. So that's that side of the room done. We now have this side where there isn't really much to show because it's just a sofa, wi-fi box, some snacks down there, nothing interesting. This is where I film a lot of my intros and outros. You might know this space from a looking that way i have this boom pole here which was like 20 quid off uh, amazon and it's great if i'm shooting with like a longer focal length like an 85 mil i can just bring this out put the mic closer to me so i still capture great audio and then i have another sakani x60 rgb light uh, set up over here there it is and then this one's got the bigger diffuser on it's a great softbox it creates a lot of diffused and great 
artificial lighting and it's always set up as well. That's the great thing with this space as well. I can leave lights set up without them getting in the way. This one can just rotate upwards and I could just bring it down whenever I want or I could just leave it like that. You know, it's great to have that option available where I can just basically set the tripod up, which is normally set up and just start rolling and filming a video. Another question I got asked quite regularly was about these prints and these frames. Where did I get them printed and where are the frames from? Now the frames are from Ikea, the size of which I'll hopefully put on screen because I can't fully remember. I'll measure them and put it on screen. And then the prints themselves were printed from a store online. The Which one it was, I can't fully remember but I think it just brings this whole apartment together. If you haven't ever printed your own work, definitely do so. There's nothing better than seeing your own work on paper rather than actually just seeing it through a phone screen. The last part that I've got to show you of this setup is the camera cage where I keep a lot of my filmmaking accessories, all my cameras and lenses, as you can see. Now this unit itself is again from Ikea. Now I think this is about a hundred pounds or so. It's not expensive at all and it is great if you do photography, you have a lot of gear because you have a lot of space that you can utilize. And this is kind of like the bread and butter of my setup for where I store all my items. The top shelf here is kept uh, rather tidy because I could just bring things onto it if I ever need to clean equipment or just put some it on here. I have like Sigma bags. The only thing really worth note on here is this. This is another storage container which has all these items contained within it. And then I also recently got this uh, portable um, one terabyte SSD from SanDisk. So in my lunch breaks when at work, I can edit some more of my own content and I can work on an SSD, which we all know is super fast. So now on to the most exciting, thrilling and visually appealing part of this apartment, the middle shelf where I keep all my cameras and lenses. And of course, because I'm a little bit OCD, in height order as well. So we have everything on here from 24 primes, 35s, 50s, 85 f1.4, the 24 to 70 f2.8, the 70 to 200 Mark II, the Sony a6400, a camera that is still great in 2022. I highly recommend it. And then we have the a7S3, and then I'm filming with the a7 IV and the Sigma 14, the 24F 2.8. Now the only two bits of equipment that aren't mine on this shelf is the a7S3 and the 14, the 24. If I could buy an a7S3 though, I would in a heartbeat because that camera, it is a technical masterpiece. Like, phew. It blows my mind, it is amazing. So there is only one more lens that I would like to add to this collection and that would be a 16 to 35 Sony G Master. That would be my like go-to lens for anything regarding like YouTube, vlogging or B-roll or traveling. I think it's a very versatile lens. Like the 24 to 70 is amazing, but I think 24 is a little bit too tight when you're vlogging. So I think a 16 to 35 will be the next sensible choice for me personally. And then, as I said, I'd be slowing down the lenses because I've invested a lot of money. And even though these lenses do pay themselves back, it is an expensive, well, not even a hobby now, it's a profession for me. And um, it has taken a lot of dedication, hard work to get to the position that I am in. But I will say this, I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I am in. If you had told me when I started photography that I would have access to so much amazing gear, I wouldn't have believed you. But it also just shows hard work, dedication into what you love. Just absolutely send it 100% all the time. And if I can do it, you can certainly do it as well. Now onto the third and final shelf, the cage itself, where we have a lot of great camera equipment in here. All nicely organized as well. Very recently, I uh, couldn't find one bit of camera equipment. So my logical step was to tip my whole apartment upside down with all the gear that I had trying to find it then realizing I'd lost it and then decided to put everything back together, but I labeled everything and made things a lot more easier to locate. So hopefully in the future I can avoid that, but I'm sure I'm gonna go through that stage again because we've all been there trying to find that one bit of equipment that we cannot find. To avoid waffling too much about what is in this camera cage because I could speak about this for hours, I'm gonna give a bit of an overview of some of the gear in here. DJI Mavic Air 2, which I still need to fly. We've got DJI um, Roland RSC2, which fits very snugly in here once you drop the axis down. So it's really a perfect height. We have got the 3.5 millimeter cable here, which is attached through the slits of the cage with a Velcro strap. Radio mics, filters, pocket lights, um, tools, batteries, even a military 
box, which used to store ammunition, now has camera cleaning kits in, camera accessories, all that great stuff. So this camera cage is so functional. It allows me to throw my camera bag right here, put everything I could possibly need in it, and then go straight to the shoot. I also use notebooks as well to write checklists for certain shoots of what equipment I need, what equipment I don't need. I then also uh, write a lot of YouTube ideas that I have in here, then plan those YouTube ideas of what B-roll I need, what points I need to make in the video, uh, Instagram reel ideas, client notes, all of that stuff on notepads because it allows me to take all the information I have that is juggled in my brain, put it on paper, and then don't forget anything because I can be um, forgetful sometimes. If you only take one thing away from this video, try using notebooks if you don't already and see how much more productive you can be by writing things down and putting things on paper. And that is my incredibly awesome camera cage. When looking for the hashtag today, I'm going to be looking out for only three grid layouts. Very recently, I did a tutorial on how to do this, and I want to see what you guys have been creating from that. So the first one we're going to have a look at today is this one by LJC. This looks sick, and it's with racing cars, which is always a win in my book. It would have been really interesting to find out, though. did you try any panning shots? Because uh, these are all awesome, but imagine like doing that with panning as well. We've got this one here by It's Leon Simpson, who's gone in a bit of a creative direction with it, which I'm all for. I like this. I like that you've actually like done it at a bit of an angle and it just makes it look a little bit different, but in the greatest way possible. All of these photographs are awesome and I love that you've gone super creative with it as well. I wonder how long that take, took you to figure out or was it actually like really simple process to do? Our next one today is by Abstract Exposure. I like the look of this one as well. Real nice edits on those photographs. And look at the town. Now it looks like, a, is it a town, Canterbury? Or is it a city? I don't know. Uh, but it looks really cool. I love that old street right there that you've got right there. We've got this one. We've got a black and white one here by I Am Zombie Teeth. Please do not bite me. I like the black and white with this one. I like the story it tells as well. I just like this works really well in black and white. You've got the right theme, you've got the right subjects, the lighting is super dramatic and it just all comes together perfectly with this kind of layout. Great shots, great work. Thank you for using the hashtag. And our final one today is this one by Matty H, who has been super creative, got a rad location. Look at that third photograph with the rolling hills in the background. Is it the Highlands? Is it the Highlands, Lake District? I don't know where you've took these photographs, but what a location you have done it in. And I like that you've been super creative with the angles that you've taken with your car. You haven't just stuck to one angle. You've brought something different to the table with each of those images and absolutely smashed this layout. So that is my studio space. As you can tell, I'm absolutely beaming about it. It's such a vibe in here with the brick wall there is so much space to work with so much more creativity to explore in terms of setups with the future the only thing that needs improving on is the audio it is a bit echo in here and i want to try and avoid anything that involves me putting things on the ceiling that may like take off the paint when one day i, I move out of this place because as i said this is a rented property so i don't plan on being here in the like next five years or so hopefully i would have moved on somewhere else maybe to bigger better things but for the very first apartment you can't ask for anything more than this and if you have got any questions or maybe any advice about sound in a location like this please let me know in the comment section below and yeah with that all said and done like today's video subscribe turn on the bell icon but until next time keep creating and i'll see you in the next one later